this spreadsheet simulates the movement of uh, 500 particles um, as a simulation of diffusion or of movement through the subsurface where fluids move around particles and they can either move to the left or right so there's a, there's a random choice being made as to the direction in which they move um, and the net result of the simulation is then also compared to um, a graph drawn using the equation for the Gaussian or normal distribution. The way to use the spreadsheet is to use the control section which is in the top left corner and if you enter um, a zero in the stop and go box um, then you need to press F9 uh, in order for that to actually implement an action. Um, that's because the calculation order has been set to be manual. The calculation order is set under file and options and then click for formula. Let me just show you. File, options, formulas. Calculation order has been set to manual. Normally by default calculation order is set to automatic but we're actually using the spreadsheet to work um, as a computer program so this iteration is going on and that's also ticked. We'll discuss that later on in the course but you know how to go in now and to change the calculation order. So click OK for that. So if you then enter a 1 in the stop go box. Once you've entered it, nothing happens because the calculation order is set to manual, so you have to manually force it to recalculate. So if you press F9, then calculation goes on. And what's happening, the graph on the left hand side is showing the movement of the 500 particles. They all start on the zero line and then they move randomly either left or right. Um, the formula that's causing this to happen. There's no need for you to reproduce this but you can look and the formula that's calculating uh, the position um, you can see that it's, it's using the random function in Excel so instead of tossing a coin, so instead of getting me to you, let you toss coins endlessly for hours and hours, we're using the random function in Excel so that's at the heart of it um, and you can see then that there's a few points have actually moved well away from the mean, from the starting zero position, but most of them are still clustered around zero position, and that's because it's unlikely that there's going to be a net movement far to the left or far to the right, because that means that there's been um, uh, movement to the left, movement to the left, movement to the left, continually movement to the left, whereas it's more likely there'll be a mixture of movement to left and right, and therefore most particles will remain on the zero line. The frequency of these particles against their position is plotted up on the right hand side and there's two colours in the graph. There's the blue which is showing the frequency of these simulated particles and the red colour which is showing the, um, the distribution um, as modelled by the normal distribution. So the red is uh, is an equation and the blue is the observation of the simulations and if you keep pressing F9 then another hundred iterations take place you can see the counter saying how many times um, the coins have been tossed for each of those particles so that's after 200 coin tosses 200 movements to the left or right and you can see that the frequency of the observed particles actually matches very closely with the equation for the Gaussian or normal distribution. You can see that that's the equation for the normal distribution as given you in the um, in the text uh, and that's what's uh, producing the, the red lines. And the point really is that they do match. So this physical, though it's a simulation, this process that's being simulated of random movement of particles uh, 
gives you the same frequency distribution as that produced by the normal distribution. And if you keep on pressing F9, you'll see that the higher the number of um, coin throws that have gone on, the closer the match between the frequency of the observed particles and the frequency produced from the normal distribution. Also notice that the distribution flattens out. We do start getting more um, a wider spread in the distribution. So you can do like cells. And if you want to, you can start it again. To start it again, enter a zero in the stop go box. Again, once you've entered, nothing happens because you need to press F9. So press F9, sets it back to zero. All the particles wind up on the centre line, and then just keep pressing F9 and uh, enter one first the wall to reset, and then press F9 and start the process again. And you can see that's dispersion or diffusion of particles away from their starting point, and comparing that with the model for that dispersion, which is the Gaussian distribution. If we made the spreadsheet longer, which you could do, and had instead of 500 particles, you could have up to 63,000 particles in Excel. That's the largest number of rows you can have in a spreadsheet. You'd see the match between the Gaussian distribution and the uh, observed particles would be much, much closer.